3M was started by an odd group of founders, including a lawyer, a doctor, a butcher, and two railroad executives. Was their partnership doomed to fail from the start, or did their failure as an atypical group help them succeed and dominate? In 1902, there was a thriving village on the shores of Lake Superior called Two Harbors, Minnesota, where a small-scale mining company called Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company was founded. As the company name suggests, they mine and manufacture in Minnesota, but this firm, now known as 3M, has grown into a global powerhouse with a fantastic portfolio of over 60,000 products operating in the segments of safety and industrial, transportation and electronics, healthcare and consumer. This isn't just a success story though, it's also the tale of a startup that failed, of associates who persisted, and of leaders who listens. The company's goal was simple, and it was just to mine the rare mineral called corundum. Now, corundum is a very hard, tough, and stable mineral that is the hardest mineral after diamond. It is used for grinding optical glass and for polishing metals which can be made into sandpapers. And that was the intent of the company in mining corundum, to market it as an abrasive by selling sandpapers. However, it was an ill-conceived venture that nearly bankrupted the company. All of the time they spent mining corundum was spent mining a low-grade anorthosite. Anorthosite is a soft rock that virtually is a useless igneous rock for abrasive. If you thought that this discovery made them stop mining, then let me tell you, it did not. They then opened a sandpaper factory on 1905 in Duluth which almost put the company into further jeopardy. Why? First, they had so many competitors there and they only managed to produce low-quality products. Then, another problem was that the local humidity of the area often kept the sandpapers from drying properly. Two people made an enormous contribution to saving 3M. First is an investor named Edgar B. Ober. Ober wanted to save the company so he persuaded his fellow businessman named Lucius Pond Ordway to help him rescue the company. They paid off $13,000 in debt and contributed $12,000 in the capital. Both Ordway and Ober purchased 60% of the company. The second is William McKnight. William McKnight applied for the position of assistant bookkeeper when the company was struggling in its sandpaper business. McKnight was shy, quiet, and serious, so nobody would have expected him to have a huge influence on the success of 3M. What was his contribution? When he became sales manager in 1911, he developed a habit of going into the back room with their clients' workers. He demonstrated 3M products and listened to their concerns. That's when he discovered 3M's sandpaper was inconsistent at best and unsatisfactory at worst. He then made it clear that they needed someone in the company to help with communication between sales and production. McKnight's philosophy? Listen to anybody with an idea. In 1914, he was named general manager. It was also the time when the company showed profit but then angry clients came to the store complaining and returning 3M sandpaper. The problem with those sandpaper came from spilled casts of olive oil during the shipment. The oil has failed to retain the adhesion to the backing paper. Nobody knew how this happened. That is when McKnight established a research lab to be used to test materials at every stage of production. He received a letter in 1920 from an ink manufacturer requesting bulk mineral samples. The thing is, it wasn't even 3M's business. McKnight was curious as to why he needed those minerals. The note sender, Francis Oki, stated that he wanted to further develop his invention of waterproof sandpaper. McKnight realized at that point that Oki's idea was exactly what 3M needed because waterproof sandpaper produced less friction than dry sandpaper and does not generate hazardous dust when wet. He bought the idea's rights and hired Oki. By 1921, 3M had successfully released the wet or dry sandpaper, the company's first breakthrough product. In 1948, the McKnight Principles was born. It became the backbone of 3M's corporate culture. The crucial passage? Mistakes will be made, but if the man is essentially right himself, I think the mistakes he makes are not so serious in the long run as the mistakes management makes if it is dictatorial and if it undertakes to tell men exactly how they must do their job. 3M has come a long way. For 120 years, they had continued to serve. This success of 3M can be largely attributed to research, innovation, and learning from failure. What are some learnings you have gained from your failures? Let us know in the comments.